back again this week with MIAA Commissioner Mike Racy, sir. Good to have you on once again this week. And now we're in the crossover period where fall sports, winter sports, everything's meeting in the middle and everything's picking up a little bit too. Yeah, just hang on. It's going to be a crazy couple of weeks here, but it's a fun time of year. Um, winter sports, obviously excited to get started. And uh, we've got a lot of uh, uh, championship trophies and medals to hand out in the next couple of weeks. And in our fall championship sports. So it's, uh, it's exciting. It's fun. And, uh, uh, you know, this is, uh, this is what we do. This is what we're, uh, this is why we're in this business. Before we jump into the soccer or the cross country or even the football postseason two, we'll start with an event coming to Kansas city here this weekend, the CCA women's basketball tip off classic, kind of a, a fun way. Some of the top programs across division two meeting at municipal this weekend, just, how big is that for a, a way to kick off, you know, the season too? Well, it's really important. You know, this weekend um, there are uh, a couple of big Division Two basketball events taking place, and the MIAA we're fortunate we're hosting one of them right here in Kansas City for women's basketball. Um, a lot of our MIAA A game A game show viewers, Chris, are familiar with the Hall of Fame Classic that was in uh, St. Joe for a couple of years. It's now in Florida on the men's side. And, um, and uh, we're, you know, we're hosting the equivalent of that in Kansas city for women's basketball. Um, it was important for us to go out and bid on this event. Uh, number one, um, you know, uh, we, we felt as an office that it was important to have a, an event like this for our women's basketball programs. Uh, the men's event has been around for a while. And uh, we wanted to provide women's basketball programs uh, an exempt event as well. And so we're uh, we're in partnership with uh, with a group in Montana. Every other year, uh, we're hosting this event. It's a pretty big lift for our office uh, to do this. Uh, Amber Feldman has taken the lead for us and has put in a lot of work. Uh, but it's uh, you know it's. Uh, uh, eight women's basketball teams are playing this weekend, uh, and they're all in Kansas City on Saturday and Sunday, uh, four of them from the MIAA, and uh, all all eight teams, Chris, are in the, the top rankings of NCAA Division II women's basketball, a few teams from last year's Elite Eight, and uh, we're excited. So, if you know, anyone in and around Kansas City, that wants to see some great women's basketball this weekend, come on down to Municipal Auditorium. You talked about the MIAA wanting to host this event and the caliber of teams that are sitting in this too, that you look at what the MIAA did last year, a different regular season conference champ, a tournament champ, then Elite Eight from Missouri Western, all different teams making splashes. Just how much is this opportunity too for the MIAA to kind of maybe – brag and showcase potentially this weekend too when when you're going up against teams from other conferences that every year we, we talk about just how good the MIAA is in division two yeah and all those teams you talked about are our champions uh, they're all here saturday and sunday missouri southern missouri western hayes and carney and uh you know the idea is that uh you know these these events will count uh but they're exempt they're extra games that all of these teams get to play and, uh, the, you know, they've really earned it based on their success last year. But we'll know pretty soon how, how good our programs are this year. On, on Saturday, for instance, Chris, uh, uh, Fort Hayes State, a, a preseason number three in the country, is going to tip off and play uh, the preseason number six team in the country, West Texas A&M. And uh, so we'll know pretty soon uh, – probably sometime Saturday night and Sunday, um, you know, how these four great programs in the MIAA uh, stack up with some of the nation's best. And, uh, but it's, it's a big deal. You know, we uh, uh, in basketball, men's and women's, we, we have a grueling uh, conference schedule. You know, it's very difficult every week, weekend and week out, uh, you know, to win tough games at home, to go on the road and win. And uh, these are great uh, events when we could showcase some of our best teams against some of the country's uh, best teams and and see where we're at. 
This next to- this next topic kind of goes hand in hand with basketball. Well, it really goes for any sport. It's kind of a polarizing topic that we get into officiating one way or the other, whether it's pro, college, high school, um, especially I think at high school and maybe even college level at this point. There, there's a need for officials to from Missouri and Kansas and high school, but you also see in college that officials are getting older. I mean that's that's normal, right? Where it's yeah. just kind of one of those hard professions and every year we kind of have this conversation about you know the heckling the too personal i think is the right word there i mean it's one thing to disagree with a call but i feel like we're in a day and age where everything's just a little bit more extreme when it comes to how people treat officials in this day and age too yeah you know the video i shared with you chris um, you know, it's an excellent video that really highlights, I think, some of the reasons that we're seeing um, uh, a drop, a significant drop in the number of officials that we're able to draw from. Um, and, the, you know, the video is really, um, it's uh, showing examples of, uh, of really um, uh, tragic incidents at the youth level or the high school level where officials are being physically assaulted or or um, verbally abused and and it's ugly and um, but we see some of that at the at the college level as well and you know we we got a copy of that video uh, last week and we sent it around you know just as a reminder uh, to our programs that you know we need we need help from our ADs and other leaders on campus to make sure our games are done in a way that, um, you know, we're sh- we're still showing respect and and dignity to everyone involved with our game. You know, there's a way for coaches and and administrators to question a call, you know, and whether you know what did the official see, uh, where where was he or she looking, mm-hmm. what position did they have. But to do that in a respectful way, and and you know, really, I think in a lot of ways it's indicative of what's happened in society. You know, we've lost that ability to communicate, to talk to each other, yeah. to work through things, uh, to 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 have a civil discourse. And if we can't return that in sport, youth sport, high school sport, even collegiate sport, we're not going to have games because these games don't happen if we don't have three individuals that are willing to put themselves on a basketball court on a Saturday afternoon for just a couple of hundred dollars, you know, not doing it for the money. They're out there because they're given back to a sport they love, but it's not worth it when they have to fear for their safety on whether or not they're going to make it to the locker room after this game's over. And, um, you know, it's ridiculous. It really is. I'm glad you had a chance to watch that video. Yeah. It, it, uh, it really, um, it, it really does a good job. I think of of answering the why. You know, why are we losing officials? Why are we having a hard time in soccer and football and volleyball and baseball, softball, basketball? Why are we having a hard time replacing officials that are retiring and and hanging it up? Well. It's because of what they, how they're treated. It's what they yeah. experience. It's the environment that we're asking them to work, and uh, it better, it better get fixed soon. Uh, because if, if it doesn't, you know, ri- we're we're at a risk of having enough people to work these events. Yeah, and you touched on one of the big things that I'm kind of, I always focus on too. And I grew up as a coach's kid and everything too. To me, it's it, it's one thing when the the coaches are kind of getting into the official a little bit. They, they, they have a, at least a relationship of some sorts where there's a line that they, they, they know that they can kind of talk back and forth or yelling will kind of happen, but it's whenever it gets personal, personal, where you're calling out by name, especially if you're in the, in, in the crowd calling people out by names too, there's, there's a difference between being upset with a call and just anger to me. I mean, I, I think you and I can agree there, there's calls that are missed at every level, but that doesn't mean to be angry, right? Yeah. So I mean, that, that's the thing where I'm just always puzzled with nowadays with youth sports, high school, 
college pros, I mean, especially college, high school, youth, there's not money in officiating very often. Not a ton, anyway. No, at the at the top level of collegiate sport and and certainly in professional sports, you you could, you know, you could you could probably have that be your primary source of income, but not yeah. You know, not at the D2, D3, lower division one high school. Um, it, this is, this is, you know, extra um, money for Christmas or, you know, something right. like that, that, that they're, that they're earning, but they're not doing it for the pay. Um, but it's a really tough job. You know, the, uh, the athletes have gotten faster, bigger, stronger, quicker. The calls are more difficult. The, the you know the split second nature of a lot of these calls that's why you know um a lot of people think our officials might feel threatened by replay yeah um they're not you know they welcome replay they want to get the calls right and if there's a a way through technology that we can review a play and and make sure a close play uh is called correctly our officials are all for that but you know, I do want to say, Chris, I think for the most part, overwhelming majority, super majority, 99% of our MIAA coaches understand this and they get it right. They understand how how hard the officials work, how hard their job is. They treat them with respect. And I'm very proud of our MIAA coaches because they get really what this video is telling us, Chris, that mm -hmm. we need to be good role models. You know, um, our fans take their cues from watching how our coaches behave. Our, our student athletes take their cues by watching how do the coaches behave? How do they act on the sideline? How do right. they treat those officials? And, and if they're seeing a coach, uh, or an administrator that's out of bounds, out of line, um, then as a fan or as a participant, then I, I believe that that's acceptable. And I'm, you know, I'm proud that our MIAA coaches get it. And, um, but we need to continue to work hard um, to, to stay disciplined and uh, to be a good role model and, and uh, um, to have a conversation with an official uh, in a way that questions a call, but still demonstrates respect and dignity to that person uh, for the job that they're trying to do. Absolutely. We could probably talk a yep. lot longer on the future of officiating. And, and it's few and far between, I think, and it gets to the level of that video where there's actually acts of violence between, but you're seeing it more and more frequent, which is the cause for concern along those lines too. Absolutely. We want to be preventive. You know, we yep. want to do uh, we want to do things in the MIAA before they become a problem. We want to you know, we want to raise alarms and alerts that, uh, hey, you know, let's not ma let's make sure we don't end up here. Yeah. And it, it was a, it was a, a sobering reminder on, you know, how just bad things can go uh, quickly. Um in a uh, in an event or a sport and we you know we want to do everything we can to make sure that doesn't happen absolutely kind of changing topics here a little bit uh pr pretty yeah, simple question to hear probably longer answer but uh the new miwa mental wellness advocacy team uh just i guess in simplest terms what is that team going to be all about yeah we're we're excited about this chris this was an announcement we made last week in partnership with the group that really serves as our chief medical officer advisor for the conference, that's the U.S. Council on Athletes Health. And as part of our focus this year on mental wellness, uh, the U.S. Council on Athletes Health suggested that perhaps the MIAA would want to create a, a mental health or a mental wellness group similar to what the Big Ten has done. And uh, I thought it was a great idea um, putting together a group that will meet um, probably quarterly, where there's a representative from each school. Um, we're calling those representatives our, our mental wellness champions or, or advocates. And, it, it, you know, it's going to be a variety of people. It's going to be a faculty member or maybe an AD or maybe, a, uh, maybe an athletic trainer. Um, uh, 
uh, could be a coach, uh, but uh, whoever a school decides, this is our mental wellness champion for our athletics program. Um, they're going to be the representative for that school in our quarterly meetings. And we're going to have these meetings uh, probably virtually, um, but every one of the meetings will include uh, representatives from the U.S. Council on Athletes Health. And they'll be able to update our schools on kind of the latest trends, uh, the newest resources, um, best practices that they're coming across on how to make sure we're we're doing the things we need to uh, to identify people that are are struggling or having problems coping. Um, how do we talk to them? Um, how do we direct them to the resources? whether those are in our communities or on our campuses that can provide them help. And, um, and so this is, uh, you know, the start of something that will continue to be a very high initiative for our conference. And that's how we take care of each other. The one thing I'm really excited about is the U S council on athletes health. Chris said, you know, let's make sure that this, this, uh, conference, uh, mental wellness advocacy team isn't just focused on student athlete mental health. Mm -hmm, right. You know, we need to make sure we're we're focusing also on how are our coaches doing, um, how are our athletic administrators doing, and uh, so it's going to be a complete and total athletic program review and uh, the opportunity for representatives from each school to get together share what's working, uh, share new ideas, and uh, hopefully make uh, uh, enhancements and make things better on all of our campuses. Absolutely. Like you said, we're learning more and more, I think, about the mental health side of sports, especially we've talked about before the last five, ten years, probably five, maybe even three years since the COVID-19 pandemic, too, kind of made everybody kind of look in the mirror a little bit too about, okay, what all do we need to do for each other, for ourselves? And I, I think it gets lost still the, the amount of pressure that is on college athletes, student athletes, whether it comes from media perspective or fans or their own personal expectations too. Pressure can be overwhelming, not just in sports, but as a whole. And the, this feels like a good way to kind of, not maybe manage maybe it's the right word but find ways to cope with the, the, the pressure that student athletes coaches administrators can feel throughout a season too yeah the you know um uh student athletes coaches athletic administrators these are people that are are used to being successful they're yeah. very competitive they work hard <clears throat> they um they're skilled they're talented they don't like to lose and um whether we're talking about how someone's doing and in coping with, uh, uh, you know, not not being a starter anymore, or trying to overcome an injury, or, you know, um, not uh, not shooting as high a percentage as they did last year, or getting a C on a test, or having a girlfriend uh, that uh, you know you just broke up with, or um, problems back home with with mom and dad, or you know whatever our our students and others are going through. Um, you know, that's, that's what we need to work on. And, and, you know, the big thing about mental health, you know, it's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to take care of each other, but our coaches and, and folks in athletics are realizing Chris that, um, if something's bothering you, um, you're not performing at your optimal level. You know, you're right. not, yeah. you're not performing in a way that's contributing to the team's success. And that's whether you're a coach or an assistant coach or a, a student athlete or an administrator. We need everyone to have the opportunities to perform at an optimal level. And that, you know, that's really what this task force is about, is to make sure that those that are coming to work at an MIAA school or be a student athlete at MI, an MIAA school, that they realize that this is a top priority in the MIAA and we're going to do things, everything we can to make sure that you have a chance as a coach, administrator, or student athlete to be successful. Absolutely. We'll finish out the podcast this week uh, with, with some talk about postseason. 
in the fall sports. We talked about basketball already, and we're going to get into wrestling, I'm sure, in the next few weeks as well. Uh, Football-wise, the regional rankings coming out for the second week now. This week, it was actually ranked. Last week, I think it was just here are the 10 that are potentially being looked at for the seven spots. Now you get the top 10. It's always interesting year in and year out of how things will shake out, especially with strength of schedule. And right now you have Pittsburgh State, and then you have Emporia Northwest that kind of seem in a battle for their spot. And who knows, maybe three teams get in, but the other teams that don't get into the postseason, there's bowl games that are available. How, how does that go about for the conference getting multiple bowl games each year? Yeah, so – you know, there are just a few of these bowl games that are out there in Division Two, And, you know, uh, like we were talking about for our officials, uh, these bowl games don't make a lot of money either. You know, they don't have ESPN deals and major sponsors like you see at the D1 level. So, right. you know, these are smaller communities that want to want to have an event in early December. And and we're fortunate that uh, three of them are here kind of in the in the Kansas City area or the MIAA footprint. Uh, one's in Texarkana, uh, Arkansas. Uh, another one's in, in Corsicana, Texas. And then the third third bowl game that's uh, been around for a while is the Mineral Water Bowl in Excelsior Springs. <clears throat> and um, we've been fortunate that the MIAA is, has had teams in all three of those bowls and is, and they, they've, um, had success in all three of those bowls. Right. Um, I'm hopeful that this year we'll have again uh, an opportunity for two or three of our teams uh, to, if they don't make the playoffs, to play in the bowl games. Um, and, uh, you know, we don't really have a relationship per se, like, you know, the Big 12 does with these bowls. And, you know, the the Orange Bowl gets our, our, our top team in the right. conference and the uh, you know, the, the Cotton Bowl gets the next team. You know, we don't have anything like that. It's really up to these bowl games to send out invitations. And they, you know, I've, I've been in touch with all of them to, to talk about how our teams are doing. And they watch. They they watch uh, the games. They, they keep up with the rankings. They keep up with uh, how teams are doing. They even, you know, they even understand who's, who's healthy, who's injured, who's banged up who's playing well, who's hot, you know, they, they know, they know all of this. They and do the research. Uh, they, they do the research and, um, and they understand, you know, Chris, uh, the history of our conference and the success of our league. And, you know, I'm not sure that we always get love. And, you know, you look at the D2 coaches poll, you know, coaches all over the country or uh, a media poll from people all over the country. <clears throat> you know, I think there are a lot of people that just don't give the MIAA credit, um, for how strong our teams are. And they, they may look at our league this year as being a little down. <clears throat> I think it's just the opposite. You know, I think, I think some of the teams that have been down are coming back uh, right. and, and getting better, you know, and uh, you don't have to look any further than uh, Missouri Southern and Joplin yeah. and how they've, how they've done this year. And it's a, it's a battle every week. Every weekend is a tough game. Um, and, um, you know, we're hopeful we get uh, at least two teams into the playoffs and then two or three teams in the bowl games. And, um, you know, that'll be a great reward for, you know, five of our MIAA football teams on having another great successful year. Absolutely. We still have a couple more weeks of the regular season in football, but uh, for soccer and cross country and volleyball next week, uh, it's postseason. Now we talked about getting into winter sports and, Southeast Nebraska, Northwest Missouri could be a little wintry on Saturday, while Joplin could be mud. <laughs> Who yeah. knows? And soccer matches have been moved around because of weather, but here we go, right? This is what we expect to see in November is the weather is going to do some things, but it's championship season two. Yeah, next two weeks we'll crown four conference champs, two in cross country, uh, soccer, women's soccer, and volleyball. Our men's soccer, as you know, Chris, is paired with the Great American Conference, mm -hmm. and they're having that uh, Final Four uh, this weekend down in um, uh, at uh, Bethany, Oklahoma. Southern Nazarene is hosting that. We've got Rogers State and um, Fort Hayes State, Northeastern State, and the Hunt 
uh, for uh, for a conference championship in men's soccer. Cross country this weekend, yeah, you called it. Uh, we're expecting some some wet weather, uh, probably a muddy course, but uh, Missouri Southern does a great job hosting big time cross country championships uh, for our student athletes to get to run a conference championship uh, on the course that they'll turn around in two weeks and have a regional and NCAA regional meet is a big deal. And uh, I'll be down there Saturday for that. And then, uh, yeah, this weekend, uh, Marshall will be over in, uh, in Warrensburg for our women's soccer championship. Uh, we, we saw the bracket play out with chalk on the uh, quarterfinals. Uh, all of the, all of the top seeds have played at home, uh, one and and uh, advanced to the number one seed site, which is uh, Warrensburg, Central Missouri, as the uh, host. But uh, it's going to be wide open. Uh, Hayes plays Central Missouri, and they tied earlier in the year, and then Emporia State's in the other semifinal, and uh, I think they uh, they beat uh, UCM earlier in the year, so. Um, it's not going to be easy for the number one seed. Uh, Northwest is uh, who we, Emporia has to match up with, and uh, uh, they're, they've had a great season as well. So it's going to be a lot of fun, and, and I think, Chris, I think we're well positioned um, in, in soccer and volleyball and cross country to uh, have some student athletes that are going to go on and have some success at NCAA regionals and, and maybe beyond that. So um, so it's a great time of year and uh, winding down the fall, and um, I'm uh, excited we get to uh, to be there for part of that uh, this weekend. When I, for me, anyway, being down there at the cross country championship in my ring gear, uh, trying to trying to not get too muddy. <laughs> that was my last question for you. Do you, do you have your mud boots already packed? I, I do. I do. We'll put the. <laughs> We'll put the trophies in uh, plastic wrap until go. we have to hand them out, but uh, should be a lot of fun. And um, uh, anyone that uh, you know wants to stay indoors, out of the rain, uh, there's plenty of uh, basketball action and and uh, soccer action to watch on the MIAA network as well. MIAA Commissioner Mike Racy, thank you for your time as always. You bet. Thank you, Chris.